The Obama administration has yet to decide whether it will continue to enforce federal anti-marijuana laws in states that have legalized recreational use of the substance. But there's no ambiguity about its intentions to ignore state laws intended to protect the rights of gun owners. In an April 26 letter to Kansas Governor Sam Brownback, Attorney General Eric Holder stated that federal agencies will continue to enforce all federal firearm laws and regulations within Kansas despite a recently enacted state law criminalizing enforcement of federal anti-gun laws. Holder also said that the Obama administration will take all appropriate action, including litigation if necessary, to prevent the state of Kansas from interfering with the activities of federal officials enforcing federal law. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger appeared to confer his benediction on Hillary Clinton's presidential ambitions during a meeting of the Atlantic Council in Washington. In what was presented as a light-hearted joke, Kissinger, who was born in Germany, told the elite audience that he had thought up all kinds of schemes to get around the Constitution's prohibition on foreign-born citizens from becoming president. At least four secretaries of state became president. And that sort of started focusing my mind. <laughs> Even though there was a constitutional provision <laughs> that prevented that prevented me f from doing it. Kissinger told Mrs. Clinton, who recently resigned as Secretary of State. When she misses the office, she looks at the history of Secretaries of State. There might be hope for a fulfilling life. Although the agency complains that its budget has been constricted by the sequester, the Internal Revenue Service is redoubling its efforts to scrutinize the financial activities of taxpayers using data tracking technology. U.S. News reports that the IRS is acquiring a huge volume of personal information on taxpayers. Digital activities from eBay auctions to Facebook posts and for the first time ever, credit card and e-payment transaction records as it expands its search for tax cheats to places it's never gone before. The IRS has now employed tech industry experts to develop tracking cookies of the kind used by commercial websites. The version used by the tax police will include access to social security numbers, health records, credit card transactions, and other confidential information. Dean Silverman, the IRS's chief tech official, has boasted that private industry would be envious if they knew what our models are. The classified U.S. government counterterrorism database now includes at least 875,000 names, a dramatic increase from roughly 540,000 five years ago, according to Reuters. The Terrorist Identities Data My Environment database, or TIDE, is not considered as watch list, but rather a repository of information on people considered to be known or suspected terrorists. This net can sweep up entirely innocent people who can find themselves on no-fly lists or see their loan or housing applications rejected because their name is in the TIDE database. This was the case with Denver resident Sandra Cortez, who learned in 2005 that someone who shared her name was in the database. Despite an outstanding credit score, Cortez was denied an auto loan and was unable to rent an apartment because her name was on the federal list. After five years of legal struggle, Cortez received a small civil settlement from the federal government, but her name is still on the list. Sometime last month, thieves broke into a U.S. Forest Service storage bunker near Red Lodge, Montana and helped themselves to nearly 600 pounds of explosives. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the apprehension of the culprits, who face federal charges that could lead to 10 years in prison. The explosives theft underscores a problem rarely addressed in the debate over gun control, the theft of weapons and explosives from government agencies and law enforcement bodies. Every year, thousands of firearms, including high-performance military-grade rifles, are stolen from police departments across the country. Many of them end up in the hands of street criminals and gangs. The explosives stolen from the Forest Service Depot in Montana 
were sufficient enough to make several hundred Boston Marathon-sized bombs. You're watching the Next News Network.